Hello, welcome to episode number four of Lion's Tale. We have a very special guest today, Joan Ferguson of the Amherst Lions Club, serving 11 years. Uh, she served on the board as secretary, public relations, president, and currently treasurer. Um, she's on the show today to talk about a great project that the Lions Club Amherst has started, and uh, she just wants to share the story, which is such a touching story, and I thought it was... A, um, Something we needed to get on the show right away. So, Joan, so happy to have you here. How are you today? I'm doing great, and I'm glad to be a guest here on this program. Wonderful to have you. Um, so before we get into the project with the pillowcases, I just wanted to touch base on some upcoming activities that we have in the club, and then we'll get right into business. Um, so one thing in the Lions Club, we have good relationships with our park and recs departments. Um, they play a big part of us networking and getting out into the community and uh, we like to show the support and we have a couple events coming up. One is the Southern New Hampshire Tour of Lights. Um, this is with participating uh, recreation departments including Amherst, Milford, Peterborough, Ringe, Jaffrey. Um, everyone's going to decorate their house and um, They'll be able to have their home viewed from December 11th to the 27th, and then there will be a gift certificate to the winner for the best decorative home. And uh, that's free to join, and just reach out to your local park and recs uh, for more details. Also coming up, Santa Claus is coming to town Sunday, December 6th from 2.45 to 4 p.m. at the Merrimack Holiday Tour. Um, you can check the Merrimack Park and Recreation's Facebook page and website for more details about Santa Claus coming to town. That will be on December 6th. Also on Saturday, December 12th, we have a wonderful food drive. Um, that's one thing the Alliance Clubs all around love to support are the food banks. And I feel like um, me being a former chef, this is something I, I have true passion about. I feel like everyone deserves a good meal and to eat well. And with the holidays coming up, to play a part in that is, is, a, is a huge thing. So we're going to have a holiday drop-off um, with Macaroni Kids, um, the town of Merrimack. And that's going to be from 12 to 2. And we just heard um, recently that Melvin is going to be there, our mascot because State Farm is going to have their mascot and Santa Claus is going to be there so the three of them are going to get to know each other and get friendly with everyone who comes by to drop off their food um, between that time frame. So we're very excited for that and to see Melvin pop his head out before the snowfall again is a good thing. And finally, right before Christmas, the Holiday Blood Drive. Um, that's going to be at the Wasserman Park Function Hall from 12 to 5. That is the Lions Club of Merrimack with the town of Merrimack Park and Recreation working with the Red Cross on Wednesday, December 23rd from 12 to 5. So that's what we got for upcoming events. Um, the holiday season, but there's no time to slow down and stop. Um, there's always a need to serve, and that's what we do best. Ain't that right, Joan? That is right, absolutely. So speaking about serving, I've talked enough. I'd love to hear, and I think the people out there who are watching this, wherever they're watching it, um, deserve to hear about such a great, great project. So you have the dance floor. Okay, well every, every once in a while people, they just run into unfortunate circumstances and our role as, as members of a community is to just give a helping hand because you know, you want to not only pay it forward, but you want to help that person because you get a good feeling about helping them. In this particular case, a project pillowcase, um, you know, everybody has sometimes hard time going to sleep at night and the first thing they see when they look at their bed is a pillowcase. So why not make it a happy, cheerful kind of fabric that allows them to eventually fall asleep thinking about happy and cheerful thoughts. And then when, you've, you, when you combine that with um, something that's made with a little sewing skills and a little love, what you get is something really spectacular. Beautiful. Fabric pillowcases. And what even is even more impressive is that a lot of us sewers have extra fabric. So we just, when you put 
bits and pieces together, they become something magical. In our particular case, we have built about 500 pillowcases for agencies such as um, Bridges, the Anne Marie House. Um, we've given some to Liberty House. We've also provided some to the police departments and the emergency response units so that they, give, they can give something to a child to distract them because in each little children's pillowcase kit, there's a stuffed animal, something to hold on to. And then um, there is, uh, if they're, they're being removed from an unfortunate situation, they have something to put their items in and they've got not only a pillowcase, but they've got a little bag or a little sack to put in their precious little treasures. This year though, for um, the holiday seasons, we've agreed to provide about 150, 160 pillowcases for our clients at the um, Hillsborough Meals on Wheels program. So um, we're, we're looking for all those seamstresses. We're looking for those who have talents with ironing and sewing and cutting so that uh, we, can, we can assemble these pillowcases. Uh, and we hope, at least there's an interest in district the zone, I'm sorry, in the zone or maybe even the district, taking on this project as well to provide pillowcases within their communities for those in need. Um, what kinds of questions do you think that our viewers are going to have, Adam? Well, some questions they might have is, you know, how do we do this in this time with COVID? Do we, are we allowed to work on it ourselves in our own homes and, and then drop off? Is this something we should have in one location done at one time? I think these are questions uh, that come right to my head. Okay, well that, you know, that's an easy question and it's, um, those of you who already own sewing machines, you can contact the Amherst Lions Club um, and we have the kits, the, uh, they are, the fabric is pre-cut, we have oh. patterns and you can take as many of those kits and assemble those, uh, those uh, pillowcases and return them back to the Lions Club. Um, very simple, very easy. And if you don't want to go out, but you do want to sew, what we'll, we'll be glad to do for you is give, uh, deliver those kits and we'll pick them up when they're finished. Awesome. Awesome. And then they can contact you on Facebook or is there a website you want to? Um, there is an email address, Amherst Lions Club at Gmail. Amherst um, Club at Gmail. Wonderful. So that will work. Um, you can certainly go to our Facebook page and send us a, a, a message and we'll respond right away. We love for people to participate. Also, if you know of an agency that is in need of pillowcases, let's see what we can do, particularly in the coming new year. If we want to make our first you know, our first goal, which is going to be with the Hillsborough Meals and Wheels yes. organization. And then after that, we'll start ginning up for the new year. And we're, we're glad to make happy pillowcases. And we have lots and lots of friendly um, plushies, as they're now called. They're no longer called uh, stuffed animals, by the way. Plushies? They're called plushies. Wonderful. I never heard of that till right now. I saw it in the email you sent me, and I'm like, I've never even seen it. Yeah, that's that's the new. That's I the do new have word. a question. Um, is have you ever heard back from a particular family or a child of the story on how much a pillow like this has meant to a, a little boy or girl at all in these times of this great project? Not a specific story, but you hear secondhand things like how much they enjoy them because they're. Kids, children use their imagination for everything. Yes. So they receive a pillowcase. Well, n wait a minute, it's just not a pillowcase. It's something to, to haul your toys around with or your, or your um, clothing or whatever you're, you know, you need to pack up a little something and you don't have a suitcase, so you take it around. Um, some of them have, I've seen them, especially the smaller ones, they love to put their feet in it and kind of bring it up and it becomes a mini um, sleeping bag while they're watching television or at, you know, at dinner or something. Awesome. Uh, as you were speaking, I had another question come to mind. Sure. Um, fabrics and choices of fabric. Is there a particular fabric you choose? Um, are there some kids or children with allergies or that can't touch cotton or certain fabrics? It's can you speak on that? Cotton is the standard. Okay. Um, because, you know, washed and washed and washed. And you'll have to forgive my Midwest accent. I say wash, I don't say wash, like you all do. Um, 
but um, it's always cheerful, happy fabric. Yes. And we're always looking for donations of fabric. We can we can certainly take that too, but it should be cotton. It shouldn't be any cotton. kind of knit. Right. Uh, flannel works well too, but you want to avoid any kind of plastic um, based fabric because okay. of the fact that it's just it's just too rough for our delicate faces. Right. I noticed because you have a lot of beautiful colors here on some of these patterns and just with colors and dyes these days you just never know and this is something you know yeah. somebody who has a child with some allergies or something coming from a gluten-free food and beverage business is something parents take very serious. You, you got it exactly um, and so 100 percent cotton. That's awesome. Cotton works. Awesome. Um, we have some time left on the clock, and I don't think this, this conversation should end, you know. I think another great thing that the Amherst uh, Club does, and I spoke upon this in episode number two, was the Amherst Fire and Ice um, Chili yeah. Cook-Off. It was such a great experience uh, last year. Um, we had multiple chilies in the contest, some restaurants, I think five clubs around the, the zone were participated. And then we had um, a couple people in the community. And the, the two little girls, I forget their names at this time, uh, the sisters, they, they, uh, they took a home uh, local award, I think it was a People's they Choice got, or local. They earned the People's Choice Award. Yes. And yeah, it was two sisters. And yeah, they had a little bit of oversight. But they basically, they put all the ingredients together, they, um, they cooked it, and they served it. Yeah, they, they did they serve it. They took the whole... They did a great job serving yeah. it. Um, so uh, I'm excited, and I hope with COVID that we can work something out in some way. I know we were talking about some ideas on ways to get around COVID restrictions. Um, i really like to see this take place to defend um, the oh, chili yeah. cook-off. Well, that's but, only, only because maybe Merrimack... Uh, Lions Club was the club winner, and yes. I remember um, I was not a judge, but I was counting the votes because we—it's a people judged, yeah, uh, or participant judged uh, event. Uh, Merrimack just blew away the other f four clubs, and I'm sure the other clubs want to come back and, wow. and uh, see if they could top that because you know they had a little taste of your magic ingredients, as I recall. A little taste, and I've been working on some other ideas uh -huh. and, and how, how to do it a little differently. I recently just brought some um, chili to, to my buddies at UPS. I made a batch and uh, we also brought it to a Halloween party and uh, it was a cold Halloween night and it went real quick <laughs> and uh, everyone was having a good time with a nice warm belly of chili. Um, so I'm looking forward to it, and, and like I said, I hope we can have that event go off. It was, um, it would have been the, um, well, last year it was the, well, last February, this past February, yep. uh, before COVID hit us really bad, um, it was the fifth annual, and each year it just gets better and better, and the chili is the star. We try to distract people with, like, salad yep. or I make your own ice cream, and or ice cream sundae, and that just never works. It's always the chili that's the focus. Yeah. And there's some pretty, dis you know, there, there's some debates going on. If you, if you walk around the hall yep. where people are eating, they, you know, they're arguing about which one they like better. And they're saying, well, this has this better taste or this has this better. They, they like the vegetarian versus the, the, the meat. Or maybe it's beef. They like the beef better than the hamburger. And right. it, just, it goes it's it goes on and on. on. It's and, a great and, event. And chili with no beans. Exactly. You know? So there's many ways, traditional and non-traditional ways to go. And and the best thing with chili, you can put it all in one pot. Yeah. And um, it just tastes great. And on a February night, nothing better than a cup of chili. Exactly. Um, you got it. So. Yeah. And you just can't be distracted. Oh, and cornbread. We always have cornbread oh. thinking you want to sop up. Sop up the, the sus. Oh, no, my God. no. That doesn't work. Everybody's focused in on the chili. Well, I, cornbread crumbled right on top with some sprinkled cheese on top uh, of the chili. Yeah. That sounds yummy. You got it. Well, Joan, I think uh, this was a great episode highlighting a great pillowcase project. Um, sure. If anyone needs any more information, please reach out to Amherst uh, Lions Club on their Facebook page or an email at amherstlionsclub at yep. gmail.com. You got it. Awesome. And uh, you can find uh, this recording on our Facebook page or out there on YouTube, wherever you're watching this. Thank you for supporting the Merrimack Lions Club. 
Merrimack TV, um, and just everyone in your community. Uh, this is touching many people and hopefully many, many more to come, and I'm glad to be a part of it. So as we like to close out our show, we like to say here, we're not above you, not beneath you, but with you. Yeah. Until next time, take care.